Hey, yeah, welcome back to AK Academy with this new video in the AK Expenses Tracker series. So, we have explained the problem and the solution in the previous video and we have made an introduction. Right now, we are going to talk about the architecture of the server side. First, please note that I'm, I'm an Azure developer, but I'm not an Azure architect. So, I don't have that very great experience into especially writing or drawing diagrams, advanced ones. But this one is actually, this is very detailed one that's, that's we are are going to follow throughout the, the, the course to build the, the back end of our application that's going to be very scalable and serves all our functionalities. So basically, uh, yeah, hopefully very soon I'll be getting better at drawing those diagrams, but hopefully they are going also to understand this very well and it's going to be enough for our project. So let's get started first by talking about, of course, here we have the client, which is a mobile and desktop application, right? It's going to be written with Blazor, Maui, and for Windows. We are going to use Azure Active Directory for authentication. So basically, I think maybe you have familiar, I already done a video about that on how to set this up, so basically. Then right now, if we go to this part, which is the back end of our application, as you can see, we are not using an ASP.NET Core Web API, but we are using a set of Azure functions and all those functions are basically wrapped behind an Azure API management which is basically going to serve as an API gateway so basically the client will send requests to this API gateway which in turn in turns uh, like manage the requests and uh, send them to the right uh, to the right functions so the function that we are going to have over here, which is we are going to have a one function application. Let's keep those for now and let's just focusing into this one. As you can see, the first part of the application is that you need to manage the wallets, like your bank account or your PayPal or your your any kind of wallet that actually contains money. We don't care about the details, like what is the number of this one and stuff like that, but we care about that you own a bank account or two bank accounts or three and a PayPal account that contains balance. So basically here we have a put wallet. Put is either inserting or it's updating an existing wallet. This is the first function and it is an HTTP trigger. Like it will be triggered using an HTTP request. Delete wallet, the same as self-descriptive and list wallets where, where we retrieve the list of wallets for that user. The second thing is that uh, I will come to those functions, but we have delete the transaction and list the tran transactions of the user for like list the transactions of today the transactions of the last week or the last month or the last year it depends and i mean by transactions it's an income or an expense it depends like they are, they are going to be a single transaction but it, it like it has a type uh, income or outcome or expense uh, then we have subscriptions which is something important that I subscribe, for example, for Adobe. So what I do over here is that I go ahead and I insert that subscription and say like it's billing actually period is starting from like May 10th until like June 10th or May 10th, 2022 until May 9th, uh, 2023. So basically this one sets reminder for you. So we have delete and list. And of course, here we have a put subscription, which is inserting or updating. And we have put transaction for this one. Why I have put those over here? Because put transaction and put subscriptions, we can upload a file with it. Okay. So both of those, in case we upload a file, those are going to store the files in a blob storage or, or an Azure storage account. And we are going to use the blob service to store that. And we are going to use the computer vision because basically this computer vision, if you are, if the user is uploading an image, if he's, if he's uploading a transaction, we don't need uh, like he's uploading a car picture, for example, or a picture for, for, for his kids. We, we need to upload a document. So we're going to use the computer vision to validate that image initially, like just as simple kind of validation using the AI services that Azure provides to make sure that this image is, is a document or it's an invoice or it's, it's not like social media picture that something useless we don't need onto our backend to be stored. Um, those are basically the basic functionalities of our application and all of those functions are HTTP triggers. Right now, 
Here we have a section, and of course, our data store is Cosmos DB. You forget to mention that. So all those functions are reading and writing into an Azure Cosmos DB. Here we have two other functions separated, one called send email and one called send weekly metrics. This send email, our application is going to send emails in many places. Like for example, for alerts, we are going to send uh, subscriptions um, regarding that the subscription is going to expire and stuff like that. And we have send email. So this one is going to use a service called send employee, which is basically an API to send marketing emails or transaction emails. So basically this one will contain the code that called this API and send an emails for us. So we have it as a separated function, so we can use it across all of those. But the trigger is not going to be HTTP trigger. We're going to use Azure storage, a queue, uh, queue storage, sorry, which is basically a service provided by Azure where we can put messages and they are getting in a queue. And then this Azure function, whenever a message gets over here, the Azure functions runs and send that email. So basically this message is a set of string. Uh, we, we can, we're going to have it an JSON, like a subject and a body and a, this, the receiver. And then whenever a message gets into the queue, this function runs and it called the send employee account to send that email. We're going to talk about that in more details when we start it. But why are we having it like that? Because imagine we have, as an example, hopefully we have like a 1 million user. And then every week we are going to send a weekly um uh brief about what, what happened in the week or how you how was your expenses uh how you were expensing during the previous week so basically then we send a one million message we don't need to to make a one million call for this one but what we do is basically we put a one million message in a queue and then in a queue and then this one actually starting to pull messages one by one and runs and then azure using his powerful uh uh, Azure Functions consumption plan to basically um, scale this one automatically for us to handle all this peak pressure. So in this case, if we have 1,000 users, this one is working perfectly. And if we have 1 million, it's going to work perfectly. And if we have 1 billion, the same as well, which is something amazing. This is why we like Azure Functions, because Azure is handling everything for you. The other function that we have is send weekly metrics, and it's basically based on a time trigger. Uh, it's a, the, the trigger is a timer. So it's going to run, for example, every Sunday evening at the end of the week. And what's going to happen is it will go for every account for every user and bring a list of like, what are the total expenses? What were the total outcomes um, uh, or incomes and how you can compare that to the previous week. So we send the user an email every single week at the end of the week to uh, tell him or hear about how you are doing this week, basically. So this is this is a function that runs every from time to time, which is perfect. And of course, all those functions are secured by the Azure Active Directory P2C. So we send the token and then we validate it through the P2C. You are going to see how we are going to do that. Here, thank you so much for your suggestions that I have seen in the comments. It was amazing from the first video. That's something very important that, what if we wanna make this application, like we wanna add, have some bait features, for example, or how we can integrate that. For my app, I don't have this kind of plans, but it's a good idea to show we can do that. So basically we're going to use a, the payments provider called the Stripe, which is somehow the best in the world. They have an insane SDK. It's super powerful, super easy to use. So we will have a set of functions. Subscribe, pick a plan and subscribe, pose a subscription, and list the billing history and add a payment method. Those are going to be different for different functions and oh we, we forget that that we should have a function called get current subscription okay that's good so right now uh we we use this one to know what, what is the kind of the subscription that this user has and if he's under a free trial or no so basically this is our four http trigger function that's that's existing over here they are separated from this one and the reason why I have put the Stripe service over here, because also the client will communicate directly to Stripe without going to the API. We are going to see that when we reach to this moment, because adding a payment method, you know, we don't need to send the payment, the card number and details and CCV to our server or to our, to our functions. Stripe actually handles that very efficiently by like you call the server, 
and it gives you a token and then send the token to the client and Stripe using its own libraries, take the data from the client and push it back to the to Stripe straightforward. And like, th there is a mechanism that we are going to explain. It's like a little bit, uh, it needs more, but in brief, this is, this is it. The client is also going to be involved by communicating with the Stripe API. So this is our architecture overall. If you have any questions or any suggestions, or if you, if you think that there is something that could be done in a better way, feel free to put that in the comments. Actually, the first video, I got a lot of benefits from your comments and from the suggestions. So feel free to do that also over here. And uh, I'll make sure until the next video, I'll prepare a Discord uh, server for us so we can all communicate and work on this project together because keep in mind, this is a real project. I know that the idea is simple, but believe me, it has a very big impact on, on, on the daily life of the users because I am going to be the first user of this app and I'm building this app for myself before for, for like foreign users. So it's, it's going to be fun. I'm sure it's going to be fun. And this is the first 100% full serverless applications. This is not everything. A lot of other stuff that could be done, especially after we having a bunch amount of data, we can add some AI and some features like that and functions to train models and predictions and we can add some power pi and yeah the, the the future is big so let's get started let's get something done and then uh we we can see so hopefully we are going to enjoy that together so if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please make sure to do so so we have we know that you are interested in this stuff and that's actually giving me a set of motivation to keep going. So thank you so much everyone and let's see you in the next video where we're going to set up our development environment.